Hello YouTube, my name is Paul Kroon and I'm a power platform specialist at Macau in the Netherlands. And in my job I do a lot with Power Canvas apps. And in this video I'm gonna show you how you can build better looking apps for your customers. Uh, which are basically giving the wow effect. Because a lot of applications I see are, are a little bit uh, pokey or a little bit form-like. And not very, very nice when you look at it the first time. Of course, they work nothing there but i think people like to have nice looking apps so what i do a lot when i go to new customers and showing them the force and the strength of the power platform is basically go to their website pick a uh, picture from there integrate it in this app or basically get another uh, image uh, for my app to uh, which is in line with their business to make them show that power apps are very nice or could be very nice so let's give you an example here so here i build an application just a demo application i build in just about 10 15 minutes uh, which has a background with an image a page container in where i put my uh, controls and all my logic of my application which is a little bit transparent and also i applied some shadow so I make a toggle so you see no shadow which is basically giving an app which is looking already a little bit nicer but more two-dimensional so for the extra touch i make this shadow to make it a little bit lifted so you get an idea of how apps could be and also when i go to inspect here and i resize my application you will see it's recalculated all the time so the shadow is basically are connected to the page content so it always works on every device uh, out of the box so let's build this kind of fix thing together okay let's go to our screen and i basically erased everything save my app and we start from scratch so what we first want to do is to apply some settings here and i always do this when i have tablets uh, or pc kind of application i like them to take the whole uh, screen or the whole tab with me without uh, the borders at the side so basically i say scale to fit put that off apply these settings and save my applications and if we now go to the applications in preview mode um, you will see that uh, you have the whole surface here where normally you would have uh, borders at the side so I like this. Uh, the downside from doing this, or not even a downside, is that you have to be aware that you should build your application responsive. So uh, you have to do a lot of relative uh, dimensions, creating dimensions relative to uh, other components. So they will scale based on the, the uh, size your screen is. But when you do that by design, it's fairly easy. So let's start by applying these styles we just created. So what I use a lot is PowerPoint, uh, because when you look at it, it has a lot of icons which we can use, all kinds of icons which we can use and integrate in our Power Apps. But also it has just stock images, which are free to use because Microsoft won't care when you use them in PowerPoint. So I think. So let's uh, pick something green. And in this case, I was f thinking, okay, let's make something for a wine cellar. So let's take some Okay, I have some wine branches, a picture from wine branches earlier, which I picked, but I don't see it anymore here. Uh, but when we go to uh, my file stack we would have those picture i used earlier so let's use that so when we have a picture and we save this we can uh, basically put this into our application by uploading this if we like but i never do this because when we upload something uh, and these are pictures which are a little bit bigger when it comes to mbs then first your app is going to be loaded and afterwards the assets are going to be loaded inside of your screen uh, which you sometimes have that you don't see the picture right away, but it's really loaded into your applications. And I don't like that approach. So what I always do is 
uh, work with data URI, which encoded uh, pictures, which is basically your pictures uh, returned as a kind of text string. So what you can do is just go to image to URI, and uh, I always pick this one, which is a very nice one. What you can do here is upload your image, and here you see my all of Brent's images there and upload this to this application and then of course we can also resize it and do whatever kind of uh, things they uh, provide but for now this is okay and then we can convert it to a data URL code and we don't need text in Power Apps so then we get a big text string and we can just select this all copy this go to our Power Apps to the background image and this is a string so we have to put in two double quotes and then apply our picture here then the image position should be filled so sometimes when your picture isn't scaling very good maybe you have to crop it a little bit and to change it a little bit to have a nice appearing applications if you like so now we have an application with just a picture and of course when we put things on this picture it won't look nice so we want to apply the page container i spoke about earlier and the nice thing about using a page container is that you can just copy this and always your logic you can put in the page container because this is not the only thing we can have on the screen we also have a part where we can put in some actions which we load uh, centralized in the application. Maybe we want to have a component to have a header and a footer, and then we are neatly organized. But let's start by putting in a container, and you can uh, put a normal container from here. And if you're working a little bit longer with Power Apps, you know that with the plus sign, you have the layout tab. Here you have the horizontal and the vertical containers, which are new to Power Apps. But for the page container, I prefer to use this one because this is uh, basically having the same role as the screen itself being a place where I can put in my logic later on which is basically a holder for that part of my application so let's give this a white color for now and then say okay uh, we want it from the surface for 25 pixels and what we want is this to scale uh, based on the width and the height of our application so we can't say the width should be a solid number now we have to use a formula which is basically reverencing the screen and itself to calculate uh, the width it should be so it's a very simple formula because we can just say the parent width the parent in this case is the screen uh, minus uh, and you see we have a round brackets here it's just like mod you know we say first calculate between the the uh, round brackets and then take this part and take this of the width of the parent so you see i do this two times so i get 25 on the left side 25 on the right side having a margin on both sides of my page container it's very easy now, the same we're going to do for uh, the height only not with the width of course but with the height and not the x but the y parameter and then we have 25 pixels uh, margin on the page content uh, for all screen sizes we have because it's recalculated every time we change our screen nice isn't it so this is part one and this container we call this page container and i always say one because when i copy it then i'm gonna go to two etc now let's uh, put in a gallery in our page container to show you that we can put a gallery in here and just put in an icon also uh, to apply the shadow or not later on just to get the same app if as we have before let's put this to 50 and 50 and apply some padding and again normally i wouldn't do this uh, hard coded but i use a lot of more formulas but that's not the goal of this uh, video so let's keep it to this 
So now we have the page content and let's already apply a formula here, which will set a um, shadow show to the opposite of shadow. show so basically we have a boolean being yes or no and updates context being yes or no so this is false and it's going to be true when we click this one and false when we click this second so we can apply the shadow or not just to show you what the before is and the after when we are ready so now we have the page content and now we want to make it lifted a little bit so we want to apply some shadow to give that id to our user now, what we can use here is a html text input let's right away rename this to pc shadow one and yeah and this will apply some shadow on the back of the page container now when we apply some shadow we're gonna use some html and we're gonna apply a div here so let's put a div in here div and this div will later on have some uh, styling and here we will make a uh, like a box with some height and width the same as the page container uh, being on the same dimensions on the page container and have some shadow but the shadow is on the outside and we should be aware of that uh, with the dimensions of our uh, shadow box so let's first go to here let's apply some color so we can see what we are doing and then this x we kind of set first and the nice thing about this is that we can uh, reverence the page container here and use the x of the page container uh, setting it right at the same dimensions as our page container but as i said before the shadow is outside of our div as yeah, so on top of our div so we should encounter that we have some room to uh, set the shadows so let's take 15 off and do the same for uh, the other dimension the y to page container y minus 15 and then you see when we save this we are 15 on top of the page container and 50 on the left and we want that on every surface or every side of our page container and to do so we can just take the same formula we had here on the page container and apply this on our shadow because the x is of course 15 less so when we have the width it's going to be, be 2 times 10 of there at every side so it's going to be 20 uh, uh, 30 bigger i hope this makes sense we can do the same with uh, the height and let's pick the y and let's reorder it and bring it to the back to show you what's happening so you see here we have 15 extra at every side uh, and for every size this will be recalculated being always 15 more than the page content which has also always 25 margin uh, based on the screen so okay so now our shadow the uh, dimensions are done so we can basically set it to transparent because now we want to create our uh, styling on our div and here for you need to have some css knowledge but never mind it's not this important i'm not really experienced with this but this is fairly easy and uh, basically when you know how to do this uh, it doesn't change so first we want to have a border box which basically creates a box for us uh, which borders which are uh, by default not visible uh, then we want to have the background color so we can see what we do i think and let's set this to black and then give this a width of 100 pixels for now and a height 
of 100 pixels. And of course, this co we going to make dynamic uh, if we go on here. So here you see we have a black box. Uh, we don't see it, so let's fix that. Because, of course, we want to see our image also in our page container. So let's apply some opacity here by chasing our fill formula uh, with to 0 0.0 instead of 1. So we got some opacity here, seeing the picture uh, behind our white screen. And sometimes we can also apply some gray. That would be nice also, but let's keep it to white now. And we see just a simple box here from 100 by 100 pixel pixels with a black uh, background. Okay, let's uh, do something next because we see that still the box is uh, X and Y are zero, but we want them to be in sync with the page container. So we're going to do that with the margin and then we start at the top and we um, took 15 of the Y parameter of our page content when we set the HTML control. So now we have to add that. And then for the left zero, then for the bottom zero, and then for the right zero, bottom zero, and for the left, we should take them off also because the X we set the same as the page container minus 15. So now we add this. And if we then run our app, you see This is not right. Minus 15. Minus 15. Okay, I see. We forget to take off the padding here. Uh, that's why it's not syncing right. So I sometimes forget this. Normally I do that at first. But now you see that the box X and Y is basically the same as our page container. Even if we resize it. So now let's do something about okay about our width and height. So what we basically have to do is to have here uh, dimensions based on our page container. So this should be the width, and we can grab this part. So basically we make it dynamically as soon as the page container width is recalculated because we resize our screen. This box is going to be recalculated based on this change and uh, calculate the width and the height again. And uh, just uh, make this always the same as our page container, even if we resize this. You see, it's a little bit blacker because it's on the uh, black end. So, okay, now we can make this transparent because we don't have to see it anymore. And basically we don't see our border because we have to apply our shadow now. <coughs> what I always do is going to a new browser and just say CSS shadow generator in Bing or uh, or uh, Google, and then just pick one of those. Now, what we want is to have a lifted effect, so the shadows should be uh, applied to all the four uh, sides. So basically, we don't want it to shift to the right or down. So let's set this to zero. Uh, the spread, let's get that to three, and the blur, let's set it to 13. So we have a nice, uh, delicate shadow applied to all the sizes of our preview box. Now here you see two lines. And basically we need, I think, only the first line. Only I'm not always sure. So I basically copy them both. Let's go to the app and apply our shadow. And now you see we have the lifted shadow back again. Now let's uh, do something so we can see what the difference is by applying shadow show to this and then save this so we can toggle 
the shadow on, lift it a little bit, shadow off. And I think this is a little bit even nicer design compared to not having the shadow and having the shadow. And of course, this kind of thing you can also apply to headers and footers, uh, giving them a lifted uh, feeling on top of your application. Now, now we can uh, save this. Publish this. Go to our, our left cam. And of course, when we reload this with control to have a hard reload, at the end we get our new application and we can apply the shadow or take it away. So, uh, one thing which is nice, let's go back to the other screen again, is that now we have our gallery here, but we can just copy this or duplicate this screen. And then say to the page content, copy all, delete it, and then start building our application here, like having an edit form. Then when we need a new uh, application, say, okay, duplicate. Let's have the data table. Okay, that, that can be in the page container still. And we can um, basically have all kinds of screens just uh, deleting everything in the page container and then start building our logic again in this area which we reserved for this. Now, I think this concludes this video about how to build better looking apps in uh, just 15 to 30 minutes and fairly easy to do. Okay, I hope you like this video. If you do, please like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.